third time's a charm, you guys. This is the third time I have done this video. <laughs> I didn't get very far the last two times. Um, things just kept on happening. So even if something happens this time around, we are not stopping tape. We are going to keep rolling. Um, Mercury is in Scorpio. Um, that moved over today. Uh, and uh, we also have Mars moving into Libra later on tonight. And so with Mercury and Scorpio for the next couple of weeks, then it'll move into Sagittarius, then it'll go retrograde and come back into Scorpio. Um, but with Mercury and Scorpio, it's almost like, um, I always think people that have their Mercury and Scorpio, that they're a little bit more paranoid. It's not even paranoid. It's like they have to research more. They really, they're investigators, right? Um, but it's not, it's like, a, I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. So that's sort of the vibe that's going to be going on with Mercury and Scorpio for the next couple of weeks. Um, and then Mars moving into Libra is more like Mars isn't as punchy. Mars isn't as like in Virgo, Mars is like, no, we got to get it done. We got to get it done now. And with Libra, it's a little bit, it placates everybody a little bit more. It's not so um, harsh of a vibe. So um, there could be some things that are coming to light. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> this is my real life, kids. This is how real life is for me. Uh, my son has a cell phone Lego here. See that? It was on my table. Um, he's so funny nice to have him while I'm working today. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing that's happening. Um, Pluto went direct. So, you know, what's really funny is somebody said to me the other day when they were like, when I, when I asked them, I was like, well, what lessons do you feel like you've learned in the last, you know, five months while Pluto was, was in retrograde or cause somebody asked me about it. Like, you know, what is it that you're going to feel? And I said, well, what are the lessons that you feel like you've learned? And they were like, I don't feel like I learned anything. It was just a miserable time. And this happened and this happened and this happened. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, so those are the lessons that you're supposed to learn then, right? Because all of that stuff came up. All of that stuff was sort of in your face. And now that that stuff is sort of in your face and you're aware of it, Pluto is giving you the opportunity to change, right? And with Saturn and Pluto there in Capricorn. It's giving you the opportunity to change. And it was in like their um, fifth house, like it had to do with relationships and passion and like all the things, right? And uh, like what they wanted to do with their life. <clears throat> and they kind of, it was, it was, it's so nice to see the aha moment show up on a person's face. Cause it's like, oh, I get it now. That's what that's for. Oh, astrology. Ta-da, you know, um, we don't say this stuff just because we think that we want to like brainwash somebody. I like to make people aware after an aspect has happened because then they're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense now. And then they can go back and see, these are the lessons that we're learning through life, right? Your whole purpose of existing in this time period, in this world, in this time period is to learn the lessons of your soul contract. And people ask me, well, what are those lessons? I don't understand what those lessons are. And I say, the, the things that you learn about yourself in relationships, the things that you learn about yourself when it comes to your finances, the things that you learn about yourself when it comes to work and how you, you know, are, you know, do you have to learn how to be a softer, more patient person in this lifetime? Like, what are those, those things that come up? And they sort of like, oh, I get it. I get it now. You know what I mean? That is sort of the thing that I'm going to help on sat this Saturday with being consciously aware. So Saturday, we're having the self-alignment workshop. And, oh, man, I'm so excited because so many people have signed up already. And even if you can't make it on Saturday for the live, two-hour live, I will be sending the link out um, a couple hours after, you know, I got to make sure everything gets, I get every, can get everything together and stuff, but I will be sending, um, I'm recording it. And so the link will be sent out for the workshop afterwards. But 
I'm so excited because I love giving, excuse me, giving people that aha moment in their life where they're like, oh, that's how I was holding myself back. That's where I was, excuse me, that's where I was blocking myself. I'm so excited. I'm spitting all over the place. Um, so I really hope that you join us for that. It's, um, a, you know, very minimal fee compared to spending an hour one-on-one -on -one with me doing a self-alignment court or self-alignment, um, session, you can do the workshop for a fraction of that. And it's going to be amazing because we're going to talk about the six ways that we're blocking ourselves from living our best lives. Um, and one of the things that I had to learn just in just the last couple of months for me to do this alignment workshop, because there was something when I was planning on traveling and stuff, First of all, my health wasn't all that great, and I had to change a lot of things about my lifestyle. So that was part of coming into alignment with my purpose and with myself. But I also did, there was something that was missing. I didn't feel ready to, to travel, to, to go out west and travel. Um, and I wasn't sure what that was. And I realized in the last couple of months that um, I want to practice what I am teaching you guys. I want to be able to say, this has worked for me. This, this is how I've come to live a peaceful existence because you can live in peace and you can live a peaceful existence in any situation in your life. Because we often think that we have to feel bad or feel horrible because something negative or perceived as negative because we didn't like it or whatever has happened to us, I want to help you pull yourself out of that. I want to help you live a peaceful existence with patience and faith and knowing that your manifestations, just a knowing that your manifestations are going to come true, that you're going to get your manifestations for your highest good, right? We always have to remember that for your highest good or whatever is best for you, okay? Um, so this Saturday, join us. If you can't make it for the live, again, you can get the recorded session. It's gonna be super duper amazing. Also, pre-ordering still for the six month forecasts. If you pre-order with me now, you will receive your six month forecast in November, the first two weeks of November is when I'll be scheduling them. But if you pre-order with me now, you will also get December of 2019. So you'll actually get seven months. So you'll get January through June, and then you'll get December. Um, the Jade Onyx ring that I'm wearing, it's gorgeous. It's really um, for um, healing the heart chakra. So if you are a person that needs a little extra assistance with healing your heart chakra. My cards are upside down. Um, check out the ring. There are three sizes, six, seven, and eight. <sighs> okay. I feel like somebody is dealing with an authority figure today. And I feel like they're, tr and it may not even be authority figure. It may just be the fact that we have Mars moving into Libra and we're realizing, see, I feel like there's a defensive nature with this person. I don't know that they mean to be, it, it means to be defensive or something. I think I forgot to put do not disturb on my phone. Hold on a second because it'll just go off the whole time. And I know I do this all the time, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's real life, kids. This is my real life, welcome to it. Um, so I have Justice, the King of Swords, the Seven of Wands, healthy boundaries, I'm hearing healthy boundaries. There's somebody that wants to cross boundaries. There's somebody who, um, or you're realizing, oh, wow, I do have healthy boundaries when it comes to this person. Um, it's very interesting because I feel like it's, it's a, this is a karmic lesson that you're having to learn about um, 
having loving, healthy boundaries. When we have, lo- and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about this weekend, go figure. Um, when you have loving, healthy boundaries, um, it's easier, this is pro- this might be what Mars is, is helping us with right now in Libra. It's easier to um, accommodate somebody else's emotions, or it's easier to um, to not trigger an ego egoic reaction from someone when you have loving, healthy boundaries, um, especially in the home. So, because I have the four of wands down here. Oh, there is a cycle that is ending. I love it. Someone learned a valuable lesson about stability. Someone has learned a valuable lesson about no longer allowing other people to tell them how to live, right? It feels like there are boundaries here where somebody is saying, you know, this is the way that I have to live. This is the way that it has to be, dot, 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 right? And um, they're saying it in, in such a way for the other person who maybe even previously decided they wanted to have an opinion. Because I feel like this really has to do with the stability and the, it it, it could be the environment, but like where you're placing, where you're putting your roots down, where you are planting your seeds even. Doesn't even have to be an environmental thing. This could be a manifestation of planting your seeds, right? But then we have the world and we have the moon. So the honesty factor here, and I feel like even if there, like there are some things that I feel like don't even need to be said, you know, it's just like, this is the way it's going to be, moving on, here we go, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big production or anything. Like, you don't have to tell people your entire story or your entire, like, you don't have, like, people do not have to be in your stuff. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like you're putting your boundaries up so people aren't always constantly in your, in your business. You're protecting the seeds of your desires that you want to manifest. You're protecting yourself so that um, other people's opinions can no longer, they, they can't even touch you anymore. That's when you know that you're in alignment with yourself. When you don't need somebody else's opinion, when you don't need to ask somebody else's advice, when you no longer care about what other people think of you and not in like a, I don't care what anybody thinks of me, not in an attitude kind of way. When you genuinely can live your life every single day and not worry about what Joe Schmo next door thinks of you or thinks of your yard or thinks of this or thinks of that, thinks of the way your car looks or whatever, right? When you genuinely don't care, and it's not even don't care. It's it's their opinion. They have their, when you can respect that people have their own opinions and people can have opinions about you all they want to, but that's just it. It's their opinion. They don't know, right? So I feel like there's this cycle that's completing. Let's look at justice. Ooh, lots of discernment that's happening here. Lots of discernment happening. So we have the queen of, so not only do we have the king of swords, we also have the king of swords, queen of swords and the king of swords. 
So we have the Queen of Swords on Justice. And we have the Four of Pentacles on the King of Swords. The King of Swords feels very set in his ways, and the Queen of Swords is trying to balance the situation, right? But the King of Swords feels very set in his ways. And if somebody is really set in their ways, and they insist, 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 I mean, it kind of depends on who they are. And you're, Like, if it's your boss, obviously, if he's set in his ways and things have to go a certain way. Sorry, I feel like, oh, here it is. Like, there's this hair that is just driving me nuts. Um, obvi you know, it kind of depends on who it is. You can still have healthy boundaries, even with, like, a boss. Say it's a boss that's set in his ways. Sorry. I don't know. It's really annoying me. <laughs> Maybe it's spirit touching me, and I don't even know. Um, you can still have healthy boundaries with people that you have to listen to that are sort of set in their ways um, because they can tell you what to do in the work atmosphere, but they cannot tell you how to live. For example, if you can't wear a certain thing to work, Stop wearing that thing to work. Like, there's no reason to create more of a fuss than, than there already is. But if your boss comes up to you and you're eating lunch at your desk or something and they're like, that smells really bad. You can't eat that here. You can look at them and be like, seriously, now you're telling me that I can't eat my food at my desk? You know what I mean? Like... They can't tell you how to live. So you can have healthy boundaries with boss type individuals. Let's see what this seven of wands is. Yeah, and easing your, having patience and easing your mind or allowing yourself to see a better side of the situation and having patience is really going to help with the healthy boundaries because you don't have to get really upset to tell to let somebody and you don't even have to tell people that you have such boundaries right you don't even have to tell people that you just like do your thing There are going to be some people that aren't super happy about it, but. So here's the thing. King of Swords set in his ways. The King of the Queen of Swords is trying to um, be accommodating, a little bit more accommodating, a little bit more balanced out. It feels like. Let's see what the Four of Swords is. It feels like it has to do with your actual, like, real environment. It feels like it has to do with the structure, the boundaries, the four walls that you live in. It may not be the physical structure. It may just be the seeds that you're planting for your stability in the future. But um, something has to transform here. Something has to end so that it can blossom somewhere else, right? This is the phoenix rising from the ashes. With Pluto going direct, with Mercury, with, with things starting to move into Scorpio, which the death card represents, right? But Pluto also rules the death card. Scorpio. Death and transformation. It's the rebirth. It's the rising up. The phoenix rising from the ashes. So something has to change within your environment in order for it to blossom later. There's somebody here who is very set in their ways and they don't want to change. And then the other person is like, yes, but if we start doing it this way 
or if we start moving this direction or we go over here, we go over here, we like it could just really be that you actually just have to move, right? Um, so I feel like there's two two people that are very like, oh, this is the way you need to do it. One of them might be a little bit softer. The queen of swords might be a little bit softer of an energy. But um, something has to change here. And there's a lesson within this where a cycle is ending. And then a new one is going to begin. But not knowing is always the biggest fear, right? There's like one of the things that people, like it paralyzes people, right? One of those things is the fear of the unknown. You, This is where faith comes in. And we're going to learn how to have a little bit more faith on Saturday. Amen. Um, the Empress on the world. I feel like this is the end of something and the beginning of something much more creative and maybe even a little bit grounded. Um, but it, but with the Empress here, it's going to, it's going to open up your imagination and your creativity in ways that you can't even imagine. So the moon, yeah. And here's the thing, is just because, here's the lesson, here lies the lesson, right? To obsess about what you don't know, to be afraid and to obsess about what you don't know is going to stop you in your tracks. This will paralyze you. Fear of the unknown will paralyze you from moving forward. And the manifestations want to come into fruition. You've done all the work, right? The moon, the nine of cups, and then we have the ten of wands at the bottom of the deck. Um, I mean, the star and the nine of cups. Your manifestations want to be realized. Let me say that again. Your manifestations want to be realized. They want to come into fruition. However... The more you fight, the more you get really stubborn and dig your heels in and say, no, I'm not moving anywhere. The more you do this, the harder it is to do this. The harder it is to do this. The harder it is to change. The harder it is to transform. The harder it is to open up to um, everything that the universe wants to offer you. When you are struggling and you push yourself and push yourself and push yourself because you're struggling so much, you're actually pushing the things away. When you are trying so hard to go in one direction and you, and you just can't quite get there, it's because you're actually resisting. The, the harder you try, the harder you push the more you push it away, the more you resist it. So right now is not a time to do that. And if you want to learn how to stop resisting your future, join us on Saturday. And if you can't join us live, it will be recorded and sent out that evening. So um, I love you all. Please take good care of yourselves today. I will see you tomorrow morning. And we're going to talk about this crazy ass weekend that we're about to have energy wise, it could be extremely life changing or it could make you drown in all of your fears. So Saturday is going to be a good day to um, work on our manifestations. I love you guys. Have a good day.